Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipstromstudios.co.uk and welcome to episode 2 of my Studio One version 4 series. And in today's video we are going to be looking at the marvellous chord track. It's fantastic, it's a very very useful songwriting and arranging tool uh, and uh, it's actually going to be really useful for session musicians as well. Um, you know, in, in that scenario where somebody sends you a guide guitar part or something to play along to if you're playing a piano part or a, or a bass part or a flute part or whatever you might be playing along to and uh, all they do is they send you the guide track and if you're lucky they might even send you some chord changes to play too. Um, you know this is going to be really useful because it will detect your chords of the incoming track and you can very quickly and easily get up and running with uh, playing to the right set of chord changes. It's very cool as it stands, the only thing it supports at the moment is um, basic triads and four note voicings. So pretty much a, a seventh chord, major seventh, or a dominant chord is about as far as it's going to go in terms of um, uh, chromatic harmony. That's about as far as you're going to go. It does detect extensions but um, only as additions to your triad. So no straight 13th chords, no dominant 13th chords. You can't do those as yet. You can do like a, a, a C pl add 13th or C add sharp 11. You can do that, but you can't actually do a dominant chord with a 13th or a dominant chord with a sharp 11. Can't do that yet, but I'm sure that will come later down the line. All right, let's get into this because this bad boy is very cool. First of all, I'm going to show you how you can uh, manipulate an audio track, and then we're going to flip over to a different song, and I'm going to show you how you can um, manipulate uh, a MIDI track and being able to do both together. Very cool. All right, so let's take a look at this. So the first thing you will need to do with your audio track is make sure that you've got um, got it switched on over here. You've got the follow chords on and then set the follow chords to parallel in this particular case for piano or for uh, another uh, chord instrument. It's going to be very helpful that they follow in parallel. Okay, so here we go. So once you've done that, you can close that out if you want to keep the screen real estate. So then you would go right click and you would go detect chords. Uh, and then once you've done that, the chords appear at the bottom of the event as shown here. And then to get the chords to appear in the global track, you can then just grab this and drag it onto the chord track and the chord track will populate with your chord changes. And uh, as I say, it only detects basic triads and four note voicings right now. Um, but when it does, it does it really, really well. And then you're good to go. Cool thing is, if this is something that you've played in, rather than a track that's been sent to you, you can mess around with the, with the chord changes. But there is a little caveat I would like to bring when it comes to actually changing any of the chords individually, like this E flat chord here. And the caveat is this, I would recommend that you do not transpose the chord plus more than plus minus three semitones. So three semitones up and three semitones down. If you try and transpose further than that, because you are dealing with audio, you will get some artifacting. With MIDI, yeah, it's not such a, an important thing because MIDI is just note on note off values. So it doesn't really matter. But here, in this particular case, it really does. So uh, make sure you don't transpose too far and you'll minimize your artifacting. Um, so let's go about shifting some of this about. So let's say we make this a, a D chord instead of an E flat. So let's go transpose. So you right click and you choose transpose down one semitone. And now we get D. So we're going to go B flat, D to F7 instead of B flat, E flat to F7. So let's hear what that might sound like. And notice the little gear icon appears, tells you it's been processed. So check this out. All right, so that just sounds. <laughs> 
frankly a little bit weird. So let's return that. So we'll do Control Z and we'll return that. Control Z, Control Z, Command Z, Command Z, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. And that will return that to um, its original state. So now we have B flat to E flat again. Okay, so there's our whole set of chord changes. Um, and so we've successfully changed this one. Uh, let's say we want to not only transpose this, but change the mode of it. So let's say we go transpose uh, back down to D. But let's say we want to actually make this D minor. So I'm going to right click it again. And I'm actually going to change it here. I can use the chord selector, but in this case, I'm not going to. So let's say I change that to D with a little M. And we'll hit return. And then we'll click away from that. And let's see what this does. So not only are we transposing it, but we're changing the mode of it as well. All right, so you heard how now the uh, the uh, the whole chord has been shifted down and then turned into a minor chord. So that's worked really, really effectively. So let's uh, Control Z that twice so we get back to where we started. Okay, so that's changing individual chords. Works really well. So how about changing the whole section of chord changes. Let's say we've decided we don't want to be in the key of B flat, we want to be in the key of A flat. Well that's cool because we can select it all and then we can right click and we can choose transpose chords and we can go down too. And then we'll go OK. And here you go. Let's hear this. All right, so that worked really well. <laughs> All it's done is taken the voicings that, that I played in, in the inversions that I played them, so second ver there are some second inversions, some first inversion chords there for, for all you uh, um, harmonic um, geeks like me. Uh, you would find that uh, information useful. Uh, for most people, all I've done is just shifted everything down um, a tone or a whole step to the key of A flat and it follows my exact voicings including my voice leading um, to make the chords sound correct. So there you go. So that works really well. Let's do control Z on that and that returns us to where we started. Okay so this is how it works with audio. It works pretty good. Um, so let's see how this works now with MIDI. So I'm going to flip over to a different song uh, which is funnily enough the same song except we've got a guitar part in here. So let's mute my, my keyboard part and let's just concentrate on this guy here. So, uh, when you are working with more than one um, track you need to make sure that it's set to follow. Uh, in this case we want to set to follow in parallel so make sure that that's checked. Uh, and then let's just have a listen to this guitar part. It's a nylon guitar so have a listen. Pretty much identical voicings to the Fender Rhodes part at the top there. So, the the transposing thing will work just as well here. So, if I was to go and change this chord to D minor, so we're transposing and changing the mode, this little icon appears here, and that tells us that this has been processed, uh, and this should now be a D minor chord. And it is. So that's worked really well. So let's uh, revert back. And now we're back to our B flat, E flat, F7.
Yep, perfect. That's exactly how we want it. All right, so next little trick. Going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to shift this down to one, two. Okay, that. And now we'll play the guitar part. All right, that works out nicely. It's worked out correctly as it should have. So let's transpose the chords. Let's not do that actually, let's just do Control Z. And that brings everything back to where it should be. So when you're in this scenario, so when you've got two instruments, one is uh, audio and one is uh, an instrument part here. So let's have a listen to this. Yeah, the timing's a little bit off. Let's not worry about the timing too terribly much. Let's worry about can we get both tracks to respond to the chord track and follow my transposing. So let's go up to the key of C this time. So two semitones, okay that. And gear icon. Let's just know that it's changed and let's have a listen. which it has. So that's great. That's what we want. Both tracks responding to the changes. So there you have it. That's pretty much chord track in a nutshell. There is another way in which you can change chords if you want to go into a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth, and that is using the chord selector. So the way you, you would arrive at that is you can double click a chord and this guy pops up. This is the chord selector. You can change the voicings by clicking to unhighlight a note and then highlight a different note. So you can do all of that there. But then you've got these two circles. The outer circle is the major circle of fifths. The inner circle is the minor circle of fifths. And these are all related. So the key of C's relative minor is A minor the key of A um, relative minor, it says G flat minor here, but that would be F sharp minor enharmonically. Um, so that's to uh, pay attention to, is that really what they've done here is they've gone A, this is a sharp key, sharp key, and then they've just gone to flats. Um, when really these, uh, this would be G flat minor, and it would also in a different context be F sharp minor. So when you're in the key of A, the relative minor enharmonically would be F sharp minor there. And then um, the key of E, um, it would be C sharp minor. B would be uh, G sharp minor. Okay, so that's to be aware of, but that's just a, that's a music theory thing. It's not a major deal to worry about. Um, so that's the cir circles of fifths. Um, you can change the chord types, major, minor, diminished, augmented, a sus2 chord, that's basically a chord that, that um, substitutes the second of the chord instead of the major third or minor third. Sus4 chord where the th the, is where the, uh, the third of the chord, be that major or minor, is replaced with the fourth of the chord. Power chord, and then you've got these additional intervals that you can add to it. These are all extensions or um, to chords that can be added um, mostly above the octave. The sixth is within the octave. Seventh and major seventh are within the octave. But flat nines, nine sharp nine, eleven sharp eleven, flat thirteen and thirteen. These are um, extensions above the octave. Um, but technically you can close voice them. But that's a whole nother subject, which I don't want to get to outside the scope of this video. But remiss to say, you can in fact add extensions to the chords if you are into extended harmony, like if you're into jazz or if you're into funk music, you might want to do that. So, or, or even some R&B and soul music would make use of those kind of ideas as well. All right, so there you go. So that's chord track in a nutshell. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like thumbs up button uh, if this has been helpful to you. Uh, and please go and check out um, 
johnnylipsfromstudios.co.uk. Uh, sign up for my email list and all of that fun stuff. And uh, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye for now.